the National Hockey League is coming to Utah. Here we are live inside of the Delta Center. Every seat filled. Utah, how we doing? Utah, you keep this energy up. We'll run through a wall for you. We know how to support professional teams in Utah, that's for sure. Us showing up, and it's one of those where were you moments today. The Utah Hockey Club will officially begin play in just a couple of months. We have their GM, Bill Armstrong, here to join us now. We've got the new logo, the new gear, which, by the way, is so pretty. It's so cool. <laughs> I love the colors. Uh, just tell us a little bit about what your life has been like for the past few months. I mean, the whole transition happened so quickly from Arizona now to Utah. Are you settled into Salt Lake personally, and what has life been like? Well, it's been exciting. Uh, the whole process of going through it, it's like as soon as the season ended, it, it kind of started back up for us and uh, getting all our players and staff situated uh, in Utah. Um, and, and we're making the move here shortly uh, from AZ into Utah. But it was just an incredible experience and just watching some of those clips uh, that happened with all the kids uh, in, the ha in the airplane hangar that greeted us. It's just an amazing experience. They got goosebumps built from it. Uh, we walked past, you know, 4,000 people outside and 18,000 people on the inside. So it was just truly an unremarkable uh, t time for us. And uh, uh, it's going to be even more exciting opening night for us. You'll share um, the Delta Center, as I understand it, Bill, with the Utah Jazz. Is, is that building ready to go where hockey is concerned or do we require alterations of any kind? Well, you, you do have some obstructed seats, but th th what they've come up with is an ingenious plan, and it's really going to make it a unique building. As uh, at both ends, it's it's straight up seating. So each each summer, they're going to take it and carve out one end and rebuild it, and it's just going to be a steeper section. Um, and then they're going to do the same thing the following year. So it's really going to be a unique setting, and they're going to raise the the uh, the floor of the rink. Uh, which will help out taking the obstructed the seating from up top. So it's when it's fully done, it's going to be a somewhere between eighteen thousand uh, seat arena that has great seats, and it's going to be going to be loud. So uh, the Jazz, I, the Jazz, I, I think it's the loudest building in the NBA, and it's because mm -hmm. it has a metal roof and it project projects the sound down. So ah. it's going to be true, truly. A unique building. I think we're going to be one of the loudest buildings in the NHL. And they, they have a saying in Utah it says Utah shows up and and they do. And uh, it's going to be loud. Oh, that is so cool to hear. Yeah, I can already imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like just based on what you were saying with the airplane hangar and the fan. Uh, response has already yeah. been amazing and after so many years bill of being in the desert in arizona and just having roadblock after roadblock after roadblock i can only imagine it's refreshing to you know ha be a part of a new thing where where you're welcomed with open arms and it's kind of a can-do mentality what's your impression been so far of just how quickly things have have gotten done well it, it, that's been a truly remarkable thing you know as soon as we went in and, and were greeted by the fans you know the next day they were ripping out the dressing room and and making a, just a truly going and creating a, a whole dressing room for us quickly um, and also doing a, a temporary practice facility uh, for us and the one thing that you learn very quickly is, is ryan and ashley smith they get things done uh the state you know the state of utah they, they want us there the city wants us there the politicians were all on the same page about getting things done to bring the NHL to Utah, and they have delivered. And uh, it's been exciting to see the transformation uh, happen inside the Delta uh, Center and, and also at our practice rink out in Kearns at the Oval. So it's and uh, and we're just in the process of of uh, getting our uh, permanent uh, practice facility uh, underway here shortly. So it's going to be an exciting time for us. We're, we're, and the fans I know in Utah are super excited to see NHL hockey. You know, to, to your point, Bill, you know, new locale, new fan base, um, you know, entirely kind of a rebirth of the organization to some degree and remove a lot of that uncertainty that the club was facing year one year yep. to the next in Arizona. Does that is it fair to say under new ownership, we might anticipate maybe a different posture from your hockey club just in terms of the acceleration to to, to relevance to building a, a winning yeah. really competitive organization 
Well, you know, we do a lot of studies on the rebuild, and, and uh, a lot of people start the rebuild, and not many people finish it. <laughs> so you <laughs> have to point. be, yeah, you have to be extremely patient in the process. And we're in the fourth year, so our goal is to play meaningful games. I think we're going to get uh, a little bit of a bump here because of the fan base and and the excitement for our team. And I think just signing Sergey Chevin Marino and bringing in Cole and Stenlin. Um, you're going to see some some excitement just from our group coming together. They they realize, hey, listen, this, this is a, a good point to be in. There's some good players coming in, and uh, and and we're building something special here. Uh, we're we're one of the few teams that have salary cap room. Uh, we've got a good team on the ice. We've got probably the most prospects in the NHL, and still a boatload of picks to come. So we're in really really healthy shape as an organization. Now we just have to let that organically happen. And as we get better, you know, it'll be time to sign some some big free agents at some point in time or make a huge trade to kind of finish off what we started. I mean, you've got some great pieces that you brought in and continue yeah. to build around a start like Clayton Keller. Uh, your goaltending has been excellent, too. I remember we were about midway through the season last year, and we're like, these Coyotes might be for real. So maybe this year, <laughs> you know, six months full uh, quality hockey, and we'll see you guys back in the playoffs. That sure would be something. Um, and I know you're also leaning heavily into analytics, which is becoming a, a more popular trend across the National Hockey League. Tell us more about this summer analytics challenge that you guys dreamed up. Well, this is just an amazing opportunity for somebody that has an, an analytical hockey mind and and, uh, and wants to get a, a paid internship in the NHL and get to work with our analytical staff. It's, it's just a, it's a great opportunity to get to submit, uh, you know, one of their you know theories uh, about analytics, about numbers, any way, shape, or form. You know, the, the, you know, for me, it's I like to focus on what numbers win hockey games. Mm. Um, if there's different patterns or trends coming into the National Hockey League. Um, through numbers, uh, it's just a great opportunity for, to show their stuff. Um, and you know, we've had uh, it's it's been amazing behind the scenes the amount of of attention and and how many submissions we've had already. So it's just an incredible challenge for us, and uh, we're super excited about going through it and and getting to a winner. And 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 that you know that person that wins this analytical challenge will join our staff, um, and they're going to be a paid internship and be a part of it. And uh, it's going to be an exciting, uh, exciting time for them to come in and, and join our team. Really unique, uh, innovative initiative and a great way to connect with the fan base as well. I really enjoyed learning about that in the lead up to your interview. I uh, want to take you back to uh, Utah's first ever draft, Bill. Of course, you're you're running the draft on the club's yeah. behalf. And I, I know you've got your sights set on a specific player, but please do tell us about the longest five minutes of your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the NHL did a great job, you know, the, where it was in Las Vegas at the Sphere. It was just an incredible setting. And, you know, when you're when you're there, you you beat up, you know, where you're picking uh, all week long and all month long and your staff's going over and over this. And then you come to the conclusion that you have the chance to get one of the guys that you truly love, but there's still one pick to go. And Montreal, you know, obviously brought Celine Dion up there, and, and, and I'm a big fan of hers, and she just crushed the Olympics, by the way. She sure but did. When she re and she, she's, a, she's, a, she's an entertainer, so she, she really took a long time to read out who they were going to pick, which everybody had, was on, the, you know, hanging on uh, off their seat. But the problem for us is that you're you're so heightened, uh, you know, like a second goes by, and it seems like it's an hour. Well, <laughs> it was like... Five minutes long, which seemed about five hours to get the actual name. And we're just hanging off every word she says and she's drawing it out, which was truly entertaining. But, you know, because she took so long, I, I think when she announced the name of who they were going to take, you know, we just jumped out of our seats. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were so excited about it. We were, you know, but it just took so long. And, and you know, good on her because it, it was an amazing, entertaining show that she put on. But it's just crushing us on the other side. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, I can only imagine how hard that was for you guys. I bet your Montreal didn't realize how many fans they had at the Utah hockey team. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I know everyone's being a little tight-lipped about this because there's still a big process yeah. to go through in terms of the actual future name, whether it remains Utah Hockey Club or not. But I figured I'd just ask you, you know, are there any front runner names out there that, that you may be partial to or that you kind of are a fan of? I, I made this this comment at the draft and it went viral. Uh, and, you know, and I was kind of listening to what the kids were chanting uh, when we arrived, you know. 
Um, so I, I don't really want to push any in any way. Um, I said the word Yetis and it went like viral. So God. I don't know where the kids listen. The kids are going to vote whether it's the outlaws or the mammoths or, or whatever it is. They're going to run away with this. They're going to have huge impact here. Yeah. Um, and you know these these kids that are going to come in and watch, they're going to remember that. They're they're going to be our age one day and be like, I remember when we named the team. And I, I just think it was a, a creative way to do it. And uh, you know, I kind of think in my mind from listening to the kids' chants, uh, you know, at the the hangar, I I I think I know what it is, but I don't want to sway anybody. So uh, <laughs> that's fair. I think I swayed enough people at the draft when I, when I when I had my opinion of what it was. So. I'm not your lawyer, but if I were. <laughs> Trademark infringement concerns come to mind. Oh, That's all I'll say. Wow. That's all I'll say. Forget it. We want the hockey team to be. Yeah, no. I, I honestly, we had this little debate on NHL Now earlier this season, and and we all kind of agreed at the time that the Utah Hockey Club was kind of clean, kind of. Oh, cool I love it. I to love just it. Leave it. That's as my friend on her name. Utah Maybe. HC. I think it's great. Yeah. So anyway, we can all debate this another time. But thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy, and we really appreciate you taking some time for us here on NHL tonight. Oh, thanks, Jamie and Stu, for having me on. It's been my pleasure. Anytime. <laughs> thanks, Bill.